What's up, YouTube? If you guys want to take your riding from looking like this to looking like this and passing guys like Ryder and Lens. Well, unfortunately for you, Ryder and Lens are robots, so that's never going to happen. But I think these 10 tips will help you shave enough time off your lap times to at least make you feel like you're as fast as them. So let's jump right into it with my 10 tips to help you lower your lap times in no specific order. Number one, use your clutch. I cannot tell you how many people I talk to in the community that tell me that they never use their clutch or that they don't even have the clutch bound to a button on the controller. Now, don't get me wrong. You can absolutely be super fast and never use your clutch. But I think if you get a good understanding of how and when to use your clutch, it will certainly improve your consistency and lower your lap time. I tend to use my clutch the most when shifting specifically so I don't have to use shift help, which helps me not have to let off the throttle when shifting or when I get proboso physics on hard landings. Typically, when you get those proboso fix physics on hard landings, you either have to completely shut off the throttle so your bike won't wheelie and flip over, but I think if you spam the clutch or pull it in a few times instead of letting off, it'll keep more forward momentum going for you and ultimately result in some lower lap time. Moving on to number two, scrubbing versus seat bouncing. Understanding the difference between scrubbing and seat bouncing, and more specifically when to use these techniques can really make or break a fast lap. I'll give an extremely brief explanation on both. Scrubbing is where you lean the bike over up the face of a jump so that when the suspension leaves the ground, it rebounds at an angle, which should help you stay lower to the ground. I understand that this is an oversimplification, but for the sake of the video, that's the gist of it. This technique allows you to get to the ground faster so you can drive the bike forward instead of being in the air and not accelerate. Seat bouncing, on the other hand, is specifically compressing the rear suspension on the face of a jump, typically by sitting and leaning back and using the rebound of the suspension to lift you as high as possible into the air. I wish we could just scrub everything, but sometimes you'll need to get a couple feet higher to go over an obstacle. Number three, brake help. This one is a bit more simple than the others, but it has helped me a ton in MX bikes. Under the simulation tab in your settings, there's a little box that says brake help. Clicking this box really helped me to be able to slow down a lot more consistent without over braking and washing out so much. I feel I'm able to brake a lot harder uh, with this aid on and when you can brake harder, you can go faster in the corners and so this will definitely help you lower some lap times. Number four, leaning back and counterweighting through corner. I won't go into super great detail on this because King Rider has an incredible video on this and he explains it way better than I ever could. But basically, MX Bikes traction is dog water and if you lean back through the corners, it'll help you not slide your rear out so much. The counter leaning, which just means making the rider lean left if you're turning right, or making a rider lean right if you're turning left, will help you not wash your front tire as much. This will help you corner a lot faster and help you crush the, your previous lap times. But definitely give riders video a watch if you haven't already. I'll link in the description. Number five, swing arm two. Number five is a little bit more bike specific or even track specific, but changing your swing arm to length two can really help you uh, get some more stability, which for me brings comfort, which to me also brings faster laps. So changing your swing arm to two can really help depending on the bike or track. Number six, understanding suspension. Kind of continuing on from the swing arm, I think just having a general understanding of how your suspension work can really help you lower lap times. Again, I don't think this is a must as I know like most of the top guys run stock suspension, but I really think if they spent time to dial their setups in for the specific track, they could be even faster. For example, something I do specifically on the 450s is try and get as much weight on the rear tire as possible, within reason of course. Typically, I will achieve this by lowering the preload and sometimes even raising the rebound to make the bike squat a little bit. I don't think suspension changes will make you break any world records, but they may give you some more comfort on the bike which leads to faster laps. Number seven, picking the right bike. Pick the right bike for you. What I mean is just because the 450 has the most power doesn't mean it's the best bike. If you're a newer player, I would highly suggest not riding a 450 and sticking with something smaller. I think the KTM 150 is the best bike in the game for beginners. I even made a video about it a while back. I'll link that in the description as well. I think sticking with a bike that fits your play style, your ability level, would definitely help you get faster laps and just really improve your overall experience of the game, to be honest. Number eight, stand up. This may be a common sense thing for a lot of you, but I also see a ton of players in online lobbies absolutely cartwheeling over the bars or swapping through any sort of bump all because they don't stand up. Put your stand button on something you can reach really easy. I know a lot of pros have it on their left joystick, like they click the joystick in to sit and stand. I personally run a controller with paddles and I have mine bound to a paddle. It really doesn't matter as long as you're using it. Your legs work as another set of suspension, so use those God-given A-kit suspension legs of yours to go faster. 
Number nine, understanding the track layout. Understanding the track layout is absolutely crucial to setting fast with lap times. Well, the inside is always the shortest way around the track, and in theory, that would mean if you took all insides, it would equate to a faster lap. But unfortunately, that's wrong. Depending on the obstacle that comes after the corner, the inside may not be a good option. This can play a huge role in Supercross, where tripling into a rhythm section can shave off seconds from your lap. But on the flip side, sometimes tripling in isn't always the best. If you triple in and at the end of the rhythm section, you have to single into the corner or single into a big straight, it, it may not be as fast as you thought it was. I don't know, man. I'm just throwing something out there. All I'm saying is understand the track, understand what's what's after the corner you're in and understand what's after the next obstacle you're jumping into number 10 throttle control throttle control is one of the biggest learning curves about this game but also the thing that i think really separates really good players from average players most motocross games don't really require much when it comes to throttle control you kind of just send it everywhere you go but mx bikes is different i see people ask me all the time when i'm streaming right here on youtube every tuesday thursday friday and sunday what settings do i have on my bike that make me go so fast and while suspension can really help it won't do anything for you if you have no understanding of rolling on the throttle or how to use any anything other than wide open. If you can get that down, you'll be shaving up tons of time off your laps and, and you'll be right on rider's butt. Wait. Anyway, guys, that's my 10 ways to lower your lap times in MX bikes. If you enjoyed this video, please smack that subscribe button. If you like the video, like the video. And as always, I love you. Woo!